Pastor Hodge is there traveling, and we want to we want to pray for all of the prayer requests. Are there any prayer requests at this time? I don't have any. Uh, John Pulowski, St. Joseph, I don't know if this was for today or Sunday. We want to pray for David and all those that are on the sick list. Let us bow our heads and pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We ask thou to just touch our pastor. Touch Sister Hodge in the name of Jesus. Oh God, bless them in their travels right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh God, touch them, Lord. Keep them safe, God. Keep them well. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Oh God, touch tonight, Lord. Every need tonight, God. Every desire, God. Oh God, let your word, oh God, minister to our hearts in the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, God, we bless your name today, God. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Let us praise him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. We're going to have our ushers to cover this time your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Brother Seymour, will you ask the blessings on the offering at this time? Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings that you share with us. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place tonight. Lord, we ask your blessings on this offering. Make each of us, Lord, a cheerful giver. We are used in your service. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's give it to Jesus.
Gillette Boys que dão na sua mão. Attention one day, amen? amen. Praise the Lord. And by the looks of it, they got somebody else's right. also. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 The children, uh, children's church is dismissed at this moment, as well as the young. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sins and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48 says, He is like a man which built a house, and he digged deep, and he laid the foundation on a rock. Everybody say rock. rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently one more time. And then immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Praise God. We don't have any time. We're just going to jump into this tonight. Amen. Lord, I'm asking God that you would bless us tonight, Lord, with your presence, as you already have, and we're looking for more. We're asking God that you begin to touch our hearts and souls, Lord. Allow us to become the benefactors of your precious word. I'm asking God tonight that you would send an anointing, Lord. Lord, touch my mind, touch my heart, touch my soul. Lord, touch the ears of your people. Help us to not just be doers, but be, be willing to just operate in the Spirit, Lord Jesus. Go far beyond just doing. 
let's just become anointed. And I'm praying, God, tonight, Lord, that you would just continue to keep your hands upon us. And we all praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Thank you for your worship. Thank you for standing for the presence of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Luke 6. Chapter 6 there gives us an illustration that Jesus is, is looks as he begins to look at his disciples. And I believe with the wording that we just read, he probably gave them a pretty good stern look. Yeah. And with a statement, he simply said, don't call me Lord, Lord, if you're not willing to do the things that I say. And I believe tonight that when Jesus Christ, and I think all honors should be given unto Him, and I think He is worthy, and I, nothing can take the place of our Lord. That's right. Amen. And I do believe tonight that when Jesus Christ begins to speak, <laughs> as the Bible says, there will come a day that every knee shall bow, right. and every tongue will confess right. that He is Lord. Yes. And I believe that when Jesus Christ begins to speak, and especially if he gives it a strong language. Lord of mercy, I imagine his begin to snap and eyes begin to open and ears begin to wonder. Amen? Amen. Amen. What in the world's going on? And God, or the Lord, must have seen something going on during this particular time that simply prompted him to get into the mind and the heart of his disciples. To get into the mind and heart of his followers. Luke 6 and 45 tells us of the comparison of a good man and an evil man. Yeah. And it gives the image of what was going on in the master's mind. God, or Jesus, is trying to get across to his people, to his, to his disciples there. And, and he begins to tell them that it was a good man out of the good treasures of his heart. He bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yes. Can I say it this way tonight that Jesus is in search of a heart that desires to be very genuine? Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the kind of heart that I want to present right. unto the Lord tonight as I stand here. Yeah. I want to be genuine. Right. Yeah. I want to be honest. I want to be genuine. Yeah. And I believe God's looking for a heart that is genuine tonight. Yeah. I believe He's looking for all kinds of hearts. But I believe Jesus is in the business of molding and shaping hearts to become genuine. Right. Yeah. To present His name. To present His church. To present the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. And somebody, somebody can hear the word and, and maybe be transformed. Not just embodied, but transformed in mind. To, to understand that God is still on the throne and, and He's still available to all mankind, even in the hour in which we live. And, He's looking to draw people away from the mire of this world. And he wants to set their feet on a firm foundation, which is what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. He desires to reach into a man's life and give him a heart that is genuine. Right. A genuine heart right. that is willing to serve the master. Yeah. I talk to people all the time about church and, and about the Lord. And wherever there's an opportunity that presents itself, we'll get in a conversation. And I get in conversations with gentlemen that drive semi-trucks with the business that I'm in. And they'll, they'll meet us on our job side to bring cabinets out of North Carolina. They didn't need getting and all that. But what I'm trying to say is I, I meet people from different walks of life. And, and I meet people from other places and not just around my little surroundings. And so I know there's different kinds of people out there amongst who I know and who I associate with, who I see on a daily basis. And when we get to talking about the Lord, we start talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. It always amazes me how deep our conversation simply goes and, and the more spiritual they become. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I'm talking about men and women uh, who say they're Christians and and who say that they are serving the same God that I serve tonight. 
Hallelujah. And I'm not saying I've got the monopoly on Jesus Christ. He was the founder of the, and framed the worlds all by himself long before I was even thought of. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just happened along. And God drawed me in. Hallelujah. And he gave me an opportunity. So I claim him as my Lord tonight. Amen. I claim him as my Savior tonight. Amen. I claim him as my Redeemer tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But I meet people that say they serve the same God that I serve. Praise the Lord. And, and they say that they were once lost in, and now they're found. Hallelujah. But I simply look at them sometimes and I wonder if they're just simply misguided. Alright. Okay. All right. You say, Brother Collins, that was rude. You said that's a that's a very horrible statement to make. Well, if you just give me a moment, I'll explain myself. At least two-thirds of the individuals, these particular people I'm talking about, that I get in conversations with that, that I talk to about uh, Jesus Christ and about the church uh, uh, they 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 began to talk to me and, and they began to expand to me their belief and they tried to convert me if you please and, and they've already done preached me a sermon and then they had to break it away and run to the truck and get them a cigarette and, and I've had to look over or overlook their cussing and, and all these things and they'll come back to the back of the truck and say man pray for me Chris he said, because we're getting to talking about the Lord, and he'll say, pray for me, that maybe a church will open up for me. And I, I just can't quite grasp that. Uh, I want to be a pastor. I said, well, maybe you might want to do a few things before you decide to step into that arena. Right. And uh, he said, what are you talking about? I said, well, that's smoking and getting the coughing and carrying on. That's one individual I know for sure. And, and uh, get the coughing and carrying on. I said, that thing's going to kill you, whether you're a preacher or not. He said, you're right. You're right. And I, I begin to think about how people in general say that they are Christian, but then the things that they do doesn't quite line up with the Word of God. I've been thinking of a woman right now uh, that calls herself a prophetess. I've met her, I've talked to her, uh, um, but she's been caught stealing and lying time and time again. And I just don't know if that really lines up with the Word of God. Right. Right. In fact, I know it don't lie with the Word of God. Amen. And right. Think about that for a second. Yeah. I told you it's been a long week. Bless you, Lord. Jesus said, I don't need lip service. Because when I look down upon that earth, sitting on the throne of glory, and I'm looking down, there's plenty of lip service to go around. Right. Plenty of it. Right. He's looking for heart service. Yes. Yeah. He's looking for heart service tonight. Isaiah's writings 29 and 13 says, Wherefore the Lord saith, For as much as the people draw near, are drawn near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. Ephesians 6, 6 and 7 says it this way, that not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, and with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Revelations 3 and 15 and 16, we can all just about quote the, end, the latter part of this. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Strong works again with yes. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You said, Brother Collins, why are you saying all these things? Just give me a moment if you don't mind. Yes. So Jesus tells his disciples, Why call me Lord and do not the things which I say? John 14, 15, and verse 17 says, If ye love me, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right. If I can say it this way tonight, I thank God tonight that I have stepped into truth. Amen. And I'm glad that the Spirit of truth dwells in this place. I'm glad that I invaded truth. I'm glad truth invaded me. Amen. 
Amen. Praise God. I'm glad that I got to know this truth, this marvelous truth, this wonderful truth. I am so glad tonight that I did repent of my sins. Hallelujah. At an old-fashioned Pentecostal apostolic altar. Amen. I am so glad tonight. Yes. Yeah. I am so glad. I am so glad tonight, praise the Lord, that I was taken down in a watery grave to bury my sins with the only name, hallelujah, that is that can remit those sins tonight. Amen? Amen. Praise God. In fact, Acts 4 and 12, we know the scripture says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, hallelujah, given among whereby man must be saved. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts 2.38. It's the motto of the apostolic church today. Because we know who we serve. And we know the acts that God has put in place. And that's what we follow by example. Praise God. Acts 2 30 says we must repent. And we must be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You can't deny the word of God. And time and time again, I've gotten conversation after conversation. And it never came to blows. It just came to a disagreement. But bless the Lord, there's words in the Bible that teaches us. These are the things that you have to do. You've got to be born again of the water and the spirit. Or you cannot enter or inherit or see the kingdom of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It doesn't take much to push me in the right direction. It doesn't take much to get me going in the right direction. It doesn't take much to turn my head around and say, hey, this is the truth. The spirit of truth has got to dwell in the vessel. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I believe that's what Jesus is trying to do. He's trying to put the spirit of truth within the people that he was talking to. And for generation and generation to come, even down to the very hour in which we're living, hallelujah, the spirit of truth must still dwell. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I am so glad tonight that I yielded to God. And he filled this earthly vessel, praise the Lord, with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. And you said this sounds so monotonous, Brother Collins. But I'm telling you, unless you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, my Lord, you don't know what receiving is. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That was almost 30 years ago. Praise the Lord. I'm still making room for the Holy Ghost. I'm not full to capacity. And I know Jesus is a contrary to his word. When he filled me with the Holy Ghost, he filled me with the Holy Ghost. But man, when I walk day after day trying to strive after living for God, I believe that I'm still making room for more and more of the Holy Ghost to be poured out of this old vessel. Hallelujah. I believe that's God's purpose for His people. Amen. And we be full of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Full of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about a solid foundation to build upon tonight. I'm talking about a solid foundation to build upon. There's a couple builders in the house and they'll know exactly what I'm talking about tonight when I begin to speak about these things. Hallelujah. Jesus simply said, Whosoever cometh to me and hear my sayings and do with them, it's like a man which built a house. And he dig deep. Everybody say, he dig deep. Yeah. Hallelujah. He dug deep. He got beyond the muck and the mire and the sand and all the marsh and he got beyond all the wet ground. He got beyond all the useless ground and he found the bedrock, hallelujah, that was strong enough to hold a foundation. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he laid that foundation on a rock. Right. On a rock. Hallelujah. Everybody say foundation. Foundation. Just a Bible study tonight. Well, Brother Webster, Miriam, that is, hallelujah, says it this way, that the definition of foundation is the act of founding. It's a basis upon something that stands or is supported. An underlying base of support or a body or a ground upon which something is built upon or overlaid. The King James Version Dictionary defines it this way. It's a foundation is as the basis of an edifice. The part of the building which lies on the ground and usually is a wall of stone. Everybody say the rock. The rock. Hallelujah. The original establishment. The King James Version Dictionary goes on to say such as the foundation of the world. Hebrews 11 and 3 simply says through faith. Everybody say faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by which our, uh, our singing were not made of things which do appear. Hallelujah. I believe God stepped in. Hallelujah. And he began to speak the world into existence. He framed it. He molded it. He knew the blueprints front and back. Hallelujah. He knew exactly what he needed to do. And he framed this thing in order for us to survive in the hour in which we live. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. And I believe when he framed the world, he stocked the shelves very good. He knows how to take care of his people. He knows how to take care of his people. Isaiah 28, 16 says, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone. Hallelujah. A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. A sure foundation. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I'm talking about a sure foundation tonight. Yes, yes. Anybody thankful for a sure foundation tonight? Yes. How about a strong foundation? Yes. A strong foundation. An unmovable, an unshakable foundation. Yes. Hallelujah. I told the story once before when me and my wife went up to the mountains and we started to walk across that bridge and, and I got across to the other side of Grandfather's Mountain. I looked back and there she is paralyzed with fright. Scared to death because the bridge was shaking and blowing in the wind. Oh, my Lord, she was shaking. She was scared. She was paralyzed. And that's what the world is like. Because we're still living in un 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 unproven grounds. And it's shaky grounds. Right. Hallelujah. It's, right. It was a great illustration to see it happen. But I had to go back over there and take her by the hand and help her back across. She didn't ever come back to my side. I just had to go to her and take her to her side. It's a woman's world. All right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. What is the importance of a strong foundation? The strength of a building lies in its foundation. The only way a building can stand is because of its foundation. The foundation is to hold the structure above it and to keep it upright. I was reading a little bit about the Tower of Pisa. And I believe, if my memory serves me right, it was built somewhere around 1137, I think, hallelujah, when I was reading it. And it says, every year since it's been built, that thing starts, it, it just, it begins to get out of plumb at least one inch every year. I mean, it's not going to be long, that's a long time ago. Yeah. They said they're doing something to try to build structures on it or try to reinforce it. After a while, that thing's going to be laying on the ground. In fact, when I read about it, it said Pisa meant marshy ground or marshy land. So it wasn't very brilliant or very smart to build such a building. I think it's 140-something feet tall, 160-something, one or two. Hallelujah. And that's not the way I want to live my life, looking out a window. All right, all right. <laughs> After a while, you become acclimated to that. Looking at everything in the wrong way. All right. All right. Ain't got nothing of a view of seeing things sideways. Uh -oh. I don't know. I doubt people live in that thing, but why was it built? It had to be built for a purpose of occupying somebody. Somebody made up their mind this thing ain't safe. All right. Somebody knew better. Right. Hallelujah. It's got to hold it upright, the foundation. It must be able to withstand the dead load and the live loads. Dead load is the basic structure itself. The live load is you and I, Brother Powell, and everything that we drag in behind us. Right, right. And I'm glad we moved several times already because we lighten our load, did we? <laughs> Trying to get rid of all my dead weight. Amen. Amen. Trying to get rid of the dead weight. Hallelujah. And uh, what life there is, it's just going to be me and her and the breathing. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. The live load is the weight that the people bring in. Praise God. Hallelujah. The tallest building in the world. I'm going to get there in just a second. The tallest building in the world is the Berg Khalifa. I guess that's how you say it. I'm not arrogant. Care. Hallelujah. But when they began to pour the foundation 
engineers bored over 160 feet into the ground, into that dead sand in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, uh, trying to find something that was solid. As I began to look over that and read into it and everything like that, they said the first time they bored down about 40 meters and what nothing. In, in their words, it was, this is the engineers, they said it was rotten dirt. So they began to bore a little further, another hundred meters, in, and they, they, they rotten dirt. And I guess somewhere around 160 feet, or give or take, they found something down there that was solid. But they began to bore down, and, and they put those structures into the ground, and they, they, they anchored it deep down in the ground, about 160 feet, and then, then they began to pour the pad, the cement pad, all on top of that dead sand out there. And, and they made that pad 12 feet deep of nothing but solid concrete, a, solid, a, a, a comprised mixture of concrete, a special mix of concrete, hallelujah, that was, was to support this, this world's tallest building. And tonight we can say only to test the time to tell if it's going to stand. Amen? Right. Right. Praise God. And only a building of this magnitude has to be with no questions asked and without a shadow of a doubt, praise God, it has to be built on a solid foundation. Right. Amen. I found out as I began to read that the individuals there in Dubai are, are talking about building another building. It's going to be a colossal. This thing is going to reach one kilometer, uh, kilometer high, over 3,000 feet. And when you look at the structure and compare it to this structure I just told you about, it's, it's, it's just a behemoth of a building. I mean, the world's tallest building right now will just sit in one corner of the foundation. It's amazing. In fact, Japan right now is trying within the year 2050, they're going to give you an opportunity to go into a space elevator. This little tidbit. They're going to they're gonna tie some form of cable that will give life to a space elevator. And they'll shoot that thing up into space with you in it. And this cable will wrap twice around the face of the earth. And where in the world are they going to store it? I don't know. And what they're going to shoot it with? I have no real idea. But they're going to give you an opportunity to go up there in a space elevator is what they call it. <laughs> Just go hang out in a space elevator. Look down at the moon. Just don't mash the wrong buttons, that's all I can say. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'm talking tonight about a foundation. I'm talking about a foundation, praise God. But, but I can only think of another building that God, God has in mind tonight uh, that He's more concerned about. I'm talking about an earthly vessel. I, I'm talking about a form of dust that was made in God's image Himself. I'm talking about you and I. Look around. The likes of you and I. God is more concerned about us than any edifice and any structure here on the face of the earth. In fact, there was a time when man decided they were going to build a tower, the Tower of Babel. And there they were going to reach the heavens, I guess, to prove a point, but God wasn't happy with it. Hallelujah. All God was concerned with was the people. We are made in His image. We're made in His likeness. And we are to be His people, which are called by His name. Jesus cares about His people. Yes, he loves his people. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in the parable of one who built, Jesus tells that the two men built houses, obviously, in the same vicinity. And while building their house in the same area, the floods came upon both houses. And not only came upon both houses, praise God, hallelujah, the storms began to rise and they rose up against these houses at the same time. And the rains beat upon the houses. And the winds blew against the houses. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And what you find out that only one, that Jesus said, only one can stand the test in which these storms brought was the only house that was built upon a rock. Praise God. Right. I thank God for the rock tonight. Right. Yeah. I think everybody in the house should thank God for the rock. Praise God. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20 says it this way. Now, therefore, ye are more, are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, 
and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself being our chief cornerstone. Right. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, hallelujah, when you find yourself in a hard place, there's still a rock. Right. Yeah. No matter where you find yourself tonight, there's still a rock. Yeah. A rock that we can go to. A sure foundation in which we can get our footing on. Yeah. Praise God. We're living in a time right now uh, where it seems like the world's in more chaos. It seems like it's drowning in the depths of deception. Amen? Praise God. And I thank God tonight that we have a rock in a hard place. <laughs> Whenever I get my back against the wall, I've got a rock in a hard place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's no solid ground in this world. Right. There's no place to safety, uh, safely establish our footing. Hallelujah. In the world in which we live in tonight. Praise God. But, but there's only uh, unstable and unsure ground as we look around and way the world is uh, transpiring in the way it's forming. Hallelujah. And things are getting really uncertain. Praise God. But I'm telling you, we've got a rock in a hard place. Praise the Lord. It's to the place that sin is no longer sin. And it's just the place that wrong is no longer wrong. And, and my Lord, uh, the motto of today is that you just do whatever you please. And that's, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's what Jesus was addressing even in that time. But what God was trying to get across to his people, and what I believe what he's trying to get across to nobody else in here tonight, he's trying to get across to this old boy. Hey, listen, I am the firm foundation, right. the solid rock, the chief cornerstone that we can feel upon, son. Hallelujah. Tonight is your night, praise God, to proclaim his goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. My Lord, we look around at people and the chaos and, and all the calamity and, and everything that we're faced with. Everything we're faced with. Hallelujah. We were here last night praying for a little while. And, and I got to thinking about how good God is. And, and what He's done for us. And, and I began to listen to Brother Bible Stereo, a, a message that he preached. And, and he talked about a preacher that had found himself in, the, in, 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 in an area of life where he just wasn't sure because he was allowing everything to affect his life in, in some form or fashion. He was allowing the saints of God uh, uh, to... to uh, do things that um, was causing him uh, uncertainties. And, 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 and he allowed those things to get in his mind and his heart. And, and he began to contemplate giving up his church, his pastoralship and, and such. And, and he said, I'm going to go to the church and, and I'm going to go and pray. And I, I don't know what the answer is. And I'm trying to do this thing all by myself. And, and when he got down on that altar, he began to pray to this God. And, and he found God there at that altar. And he said, son, listen to me. I've never failed you in the past. And I'm never going to fail you in the future. If you just try to thank you for all your goodness. All of my goodness, I guess. If you try to give just all your thanks unto me. Hallelujah. I'll move on your situation. And I believe tonight that that's, that's probably where we get sometimes. We might find ourselves uh, uh, feeling abnormal. Well, we're supposed to be church people and things. Supposed to be good. But, hey, listen, this world is it's not kind to the church. It never was kind to the church. That's right. But God said, if you'll build your faith on me, if you'll structure your life on me, hallelujah, if you'll allow me to be the chief cornerstone in your life, hallelujah, you got something to hang on to. You got something that grabs. You got, when the weather gets bad, you got somewhere to go and hide. Hallelujah. When the, when the rains begin to fall in such a complete way, hallelujah, you got to be the shelter the Bible says in Psalms 9. Praise the Lord. And when the winds began to blow, Lord of mercy, hallelujah, and Jesus looks at us and says, ye of little faith, my Lord, hallelujah, and he just stops the winds where we are, and, and he shows us who he really is, praise God, and he gives us an opportunity to see glory uh, work itself before our own eyes. I believe tonight we have a rock in a hard place, amen? Praise God, praise God. Lord, have mercy. What would we do without a rock in a hard place? Yeah. Uh, Somebody had a hard place in your life. All right. Yeah. Every one of us has suffered from some form of uh, some situation that's abrupt in our, or arose in our lives. And, and uh, we just didn't know exactly how we were going to handle it. That's right. And 
And yet because we couldn't find the answers in this world, somewhere along the way we decided to give God an opportunity to work. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. My God, God is available tonight. Yes. And He's doing what He can to try to help us through every, every situation we find ourselves in. I just want you to understand tonight that God is a rock in a hard place. He is a solid foundation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about uh, uh, looking for security and safety in other areas. So we don't have to worry about looking for our healing because the doctor can't perform all healings. Amen? Amen. We might can go down to the doctor and he might can fix us for a time. But man, when, when things get tough and you know that there ain't no, no answers, praise God's going to come from this side of glory. Hallelujah. We've got to go to glory. Yeah. We've got to make sure that yeah. Jesus is informed. Yeah. We've got to make sure that He's the rock in our, our, in our hard place. We've got to make sure He's the solid rock in which we can stand. And we've got to make sure that God knows where we are. Yeah. Everybody looking for peace and comfort. Hallelujah. When we, we get weak-minded, God's got to... Uh, he got his hands outstretched and he's trying to feed us. Hallelujah. Give us strength. Hallelujah. Where we find ourselves. Praise the Lord. My God, what would we do without Jesus Christ in our lives tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There ain't nobody like God. Amen. There's no one like God. There's no one like God. There's so much I would like to say. You know, when your mind hurts and when your spirit seems to be down, when you feel like nobody can understand where you live or where you're at. You can try to talk to friends. You can try to talk to elders. And you can try to talk to your better half. You can, you can try to talk to those around you that, that may have suffered some, some consequences in their life that would be a little comparable to yours. But I believe everything that we that we encounter in this life, I believe it is... It's, it's significant to our walk, but I believe it's, it's, it's for us as individuals. Okay. And the only way that we will ever overcome these, these obstacles or these things that comes in our life is, is if we understand who we can truly turn to tonight. Amen. I, I spent the former part of my life prior to uh, coming to Christ uh, trying to please everybody that I came in contact with. And it caused me to, to become bitter within my own self. And I knew that there was no way I could, I, could, I could please every individual in this world. And, and every individual presented an obstacle that I had to overcome. And as I come to understand that God has, has opened doors where I could, could rely on Him, someone who I could talk with, someone who could give me that peace of mind. Hallelujah. It, it begins to structure your, your, your mind. It begins to structure your spirit. It helps you understand exactly uh, what a church is made of. The church is supposed to be full of people. We've all got problems. We all got circumstances. Right. But God has opened a grand opportunity for us to step in to His, His anointing, to His His world, and, and be able to overcome the things of this world. Amen. Right. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. I'm talking about a rock in a hard place. I don't have the answers tonight, except for what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not a psychologist. I don't want to be. I, I, I'm not a therapist, and I don't want to be. I, I, I'm not a doctor, and I, I don't want to be. Hallelujah. I just want to be a Christian, and I want to be loving to God, and I want to be loving to people. Amen. 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 And the only advice I can give anybody 
like this house tonight is, is to put your faith and trust in Him. And allow Him to structure you. And allow Him to build or allow Him to become that firm foundation, that solid firm foundation in which we can build upon. That rock, hallelujah. Right. Praise God. Anybody ever been uh, to, to, to the mountain streams and, and you're trying to walk across those slippery rocks? And, and they might be rocks there, but they're still slippery because that water's running over and it's building that moss and that, that film that's on those rocks. And, and it won't take long to fall. And, and, and what might appear to be solid, firm foundations here on this earth, it, it might be deceiving. It might fool you. Hallelujah. Right. And all I can say tonight is the only firm foundation is Christ and Christ alone. Right. Hallelujah. You said, but God, why the Lord, you have to say these things? I, we're the church. We're the church of the living God. We're, we're church of Jesus' name. We're, we're, we've been born again. We're, we're serving God to the capacity in which we can. Hallelujah. Right. But I'm telling you, just as I said, God might have filled you with the Holy Ghost five days ago. He might have filled you with the Holy Ghost five years ago or 50 years ago. But you still can be open to get more and more and more of what God has to offer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, sir. Yes, Jesus is saying, listen, don't, don't give me lip service. Give me heart service. All right. Let me know that you, you want to serve me for, for who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Right. Yeah. David was a man after God's own heart. <coughs> Hallelujah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these characters in the Bible are not there for us just to make time, just to read to our kids. Hallelujah, it's to build and strengthen us because right. they knew where the solid foundation lied. Right. They knew exactly where, where they could get their, their understanding and they knew exactly what they needed to do in order to conquer the situations and circumstances in their lives. Right. It was to turn to God. Amen. It was to turn to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Yes. If you'll stand with me tonight, I'm done. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. I hope it didn't take you this long to get dressed. But I'm telling you tonight, we can't find answers in this world. We can't find answers outside of Christ. And I, I almost said church, but I'm telling you, you've got churches on every corner. There are churches on every block. There's churches on every street and every road. I don't care if you're riding through a metropolitan or if you're out in a rural city. You're going to find churches established everywhere. But I'm telling you, there's a difference. You've got to find truth. You've got to find the spirit of truth. And you've got to find your foundation. Hallelujah. So wherever you find yourself tonight, things that only you and God do, wherever you find yourself tonight, let Him, let Him supply that firm foundation that you need to build upon. And it can start tonight. Hallelujah. You don't have to walk out of here empty. You don't have to walk out of here uh, feeling hopeless. And you don't have to walk out of here feeling lost. You don't have to walk out of here. And it's not because I'm up here. It's not because anybody else is in here. It's because He is here. Amen. Right. He inhabits the praises of the Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. So I'm wondering right now. Maybe, maybe we can just lift our voice unto Him. Maybe we can just talk to Him for just a moment. And just, just tell Him. God, listen. I, sometimes I feel like I'm walking on shaky ground. Sometimes I feel like it, it's very unstable, man. Sometimes it, uh, everything around me just seems to be so insecure or it, it seems to be obscured in some sense. It's so foggy and it's so, it's so blinding that I can't really make out. I can't see. But if I could just reach into the darkness... I know I can touch you. I know I can feel you. I know you are there. But the Bible simply says that He is the light of all mankind. And darkness can't comprehend it. And God makes Himself available even in the darkest hour. It's just up to us 
by faith. By faith, by faith, do we trust in Him? Do we believe in Him? Do we, do we, do we know that He's there? Hallelujah. To become our rock. Our rock. Praise God. Praise God. Let's just, let's just worship Him for a moment, if you would. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you for the place worship. Lord, I thank you, God, for everything that you do. I don't know how to express myself tonight, God. Thank you. I don't know how to do what I do, praise God, day in and day out, Lord, without you. In fact, I feel very lost without you tonight. I feel like I'm falling, God. I feel like I'm, I'm on unstable ground where I'm shaking, God. I feel like uh, I feel like my heart's about to burst. I feel like I feel like I don't know which way to turn. I feel like I don't know what to do. I'm asking God oh, somehow, some way that you would send a piece of iron in the corner. Help us individually, Lord Jesus, to help us as a whole, Lord. Lord, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, step into everybody's world right now, Lord. Wrap your arms around and pull them close to you, Lord. Comfort them, Lord Jesus. Caress them. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus. When my, my understanding fails me, God, when, when my heart begins to sing, Lord. Oh, be there, Lord, to pick me up. Tonight, that you know who you can call. Tonight there is there's need in this house. And I'm not fixing to keep you no longer. I'm fixing to let you go. But I do believe with all my heart that everybody in this house knows you need something. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I need God. Yeah. I need something so bad right now. I can't stand it. Yeah. <laughs> my Lord, I I just just come to understand that He's the only one that can help me with it. He's the only one. That can Praise God. God is good. Amen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Would you turn to your neighbor and shake your hand? Tell them that you're delighted to see them in the house of the Lord. We'll be back on Sunday morning. Thank you for being in church tonight. May God be with you. Dismiss it, Jesus. Truly, for you and your mother.